Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Call of Duty Modern Warfare Tips and Tricks video. Tonight's video is going to be another episode of my How to Improve at Modern Warfare series and in tonight's video we're going to be talking about five tips and tricks that I think are very, very important to focus on in this game that can gratefully improve your uh, multiplayer gameplay experience and make you a better player at this game. If you guys could drop a like on this video, I know you guys really have been enjoying these tips and tricks videos and of course there's a lot of stuff to talk about. This game plays very differently from a lot of honestly most of the previous Call of Duty games that we've had so far and I think there's a lot of tips and tricks to cover and of course I know this series has been getting a lot of love so I want to say thank you to you guys drop a like on this thing let's go ahead and go for 903 likes subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and not already subscribed once again closing in on a million subscribers so thank you to everyone new hitting that subscribe button becoming part of the journey with me it really does mean the world to me smack the like button takes half a second let's go ahead and get right into it now the first tip that I wrote down here I have these written down on a notepad and we're going to talk uh, in depth about each of them is to know your win conditions and what I mean by this is with your weapon and your class setup now compared to other Call of Duty games these weapons and class setups have a lot of negatives to them or cons you could say especially because of the way that the gunsmith works in this game now I really love how the gunsmith works but in order to get good attachments or to get good stuff on your weapons you have to sacrifice and actually have a lot of negatives that are happening and what I mean by know your win condition is know what when you pick a class setup when you pick a weapon attachments and perks know what makes makes that a good setup and know what the weaknesses are. So for example, if you are playing with assault rifles that might move a little bit slower or, ha or have slower, uh, of course, aiming down sight speeds you might be sacrificing or your aiming stability you might be sacrificing, know that sort of things. Example, I have an assault rifle and I'm using it with an extended mag, so I have to give up my movement speed, I have to give up my ADS speed, um, maybe I have other attachments where I'm also giving up more ADS speed or things of that nature, maybe I'm giving up a little aim walking movement speed, which I tend to stay away from on assault rifles, but you have to know with the setup like that. You cannot afford to get caught in a sprint. Even if you have the M4A1, which is one of the fastest killing uh, ARs in this game, one of the best guns in the game, you cannot afford to be caught in a sprint because if any other player has like an SMG where they're increasing their sprint to fire speed and you have an AR where you're slowing down your ADS speeds, it's just not going to end up good for you. Knowing your wing conditions, of course, on the other side of that, you know the strengths of your weapon. If you have that extended mags, you have 60 bullets, your strength is to not focus on reloading as much and focus on using your stim shot or uh taking out multiple enemies, you know, not reloading after every single kill. Understanding your class setup, not just knowing that, oh, these attachments are good, you just slap them on and you just run around like a chicken with your head cut off. That might have worked in previous Call of Duty games, but in this game, it's more of like a weapon build, I guess you could say, in Gunsmith, and you have to know what you have on your weapon, what the strengths and weaknesses are. If you're using an SMG and you have a lot of things uh, decking out to help the damage at range, like I might have on an MP5 setup, that's going to be, I'm going to try to take on more fights at range. If I, I'm sacrificing range, range and just going with sprint to fire speed, stacking my ADS speed and my sprint to fire speed, of course I need to play it differently. I need to get up close and personal in the enemy's face and you need to understand your class setup to sort of know how you play around it. This goes for perks as well. Whatever you have in that first perk slot, if you have EOD, you might not have to be as weary of getting naded or claymores. If you have double time, you of course should be crouch walking a lot more because your crouch walk is going to be 30% faster. You should be not necessarily abusing, but using your advantages the maximum you, you have. If you have a quick fix instead of double time where your health regen is a bit quicker, then you might not want to use the stim shot because obviously you're going to have the three second health regen quicker when you do get a kill or when you are playing the objectives. You, that might incentivize you to play objectives more. Understanding that and playing to the strengths and uh, trying to avoid the situations where your setup is has a lot of weaknesses because every setup does in this game because of the design uh, is very, very important. Next is with the buildings and outskirts running through lanes. This is the worst Call of Duty ever in terms of running through lanes. And what I mean by that is because of two things, the time to kill and the map design, this game very much favors camping as a play style as of right now. And unfortunately, to get to different areas, especially on a map like maybe be Grazna Raid, even on these ground war maps that you're playing on like Quarry Ground War, you have to run out in the open sometimes to move from building to building and understanding that it's really, really risky. Running through lanes, running through a middle of the map, you know, even if you're, you're playing on Arkelov Peak, you're pay, playing on Piccadilly, you're playing on a lot of these maps on Domination. The middle is just completely open with a hundred buildings looking out towards it. So this is a game where you definitely have to stick to the outskirts of the map. If you are trying to move around, it has to be on the outskirts of the map where where you can keep enemies in front of you and you don't have to worry about as many possible angles. A lot of these situations, if you're out in anywhere near the middle of the map, there's too many possible angles and the time to kill is too fast. You can't really risk it in this game. And on the other hand, with the buildings as well, learning to maneuver not just inside of buildings, but maneuver 
maneuver from build from a building to the next building when the enemies are spawn flipping or different things like that is super duper important in this game because of the two things like I mentioned earlier time to kill and map design you really do have to focus on where you're moving around the, the map and the way that I like to play it usually is you know move uh, find safe routes that you like to take where you could you uh, have less possibilities where enemies can be to take you out and then you take those routes to get set up in sort of an area that you can patrol and then keep maneuvering it takes a lot of practice to run these to run and learn routes in this game but the main thing is be careful if you're getting shot and you're just like wow I had no chance in that gunfight that's stuff you have to avoid the amount of fi fights that you die from where you just were like oh I had no chance in that gunfight I didn't even shoot the enemy a lot of people would, would think oh well that wasn't my fault I had no chance but it was your fault because of positioning and positioning is so damn key in this game uh, it's not the best I wish you could run out in the middle and sort of you know spin around 360 turn on an enemy but it just doesn't work in this game because of that play style and like people say you got to adapt bro you got to adapt bro that that's always funny that people say that but I mean the game is uh, playing differently nowadays next is going to be to play for streaks this is not a run and gun game for similar reasons like I mentioned before and the streaks in this game are super duper strong especially those big three streaks like you might have uh, like let's say you're running with uh, a chopper gunner a gunship and a VTOL warship and a ground war or a 10v10 if you play a whole game let's say you, you get 20 kills right and you die one off of those streaks if you had instead gotten same 20 kills but had converted on that streak instead of dying one off that could have been a 40 or a 45 kill gameplay even more it could have been a 50 bomb because of how stupid strong these um air the air support is in this game and that's why we all have that that vibe we want to keep it moving and when we start getting on a streak oh my gosh i'm, I'm one off i'm two off we want to still keep playing normally and running out there but this game what they're really kind of forcing you to do whether you're rocking with kill chain which kill chain is, is super duper important if you want to you know if, if you're getting close to your first streak you probably want to back off and then get that last kill or two for the kill chain because once you call in a streak kill chain allows it so that your kills with that streak can stack like modern warfare 2 to the next streak but even if you're not using kill chain and this is something that honestly i am still failing at quite a bit in this game because you want to move you want to oh my gosh I, i'm one off of vtol i just i just want to get that last kill but it's really not worth it even if you camp your butt off and it takes a minute to get that last kill which is obviously the gameplay style that we really don't want to play that's what the game wants us to do though because you will get absolutely rewarded with you know getting an uh, insane amount of kills increasing your kd in that match and even winning games because of course when you have ac-130s up in the sky your map control is absolutely uh, insane so this is something that honestly i am trying to work on and adjust as well in this game because it is like the the amount of risks you can take is so much more minimal in this game because you die so quick so as you're starting to build up to a streak let's say VTOL warship is your first streak uh, for those big three as you're starting to get closer to that eight streak what you want to do is start to back off a little bit and then try to convert um, as you're you know as you um as you get it, you're, you're in a safe position instead of unlocking the streak and you're up in the enemy spawn and you can't really escape. Next tip here is going to be one-shot kill weapons. Shotguns and snipers, the one-shot kill weapons in this game, are very, very strong. They're very, very overpowered and who knows what, what's going to happen with the weapon tuning and weapon balance, but I will say here are some ways to help uh, counter them as of right now. Now with snipers, you see that white flash whenever you see a sniper. A lot of people hide way at the back with snipers. Just don't bother challenging those players if they have that white flash for the scope. And also also, you can listen for your character. If your character yells contact as you're looking through out of a window, that, me that means that obviously someone is being spotted. Whether it's a sniper or not, you can't tell. But if you're looking out and it's just out in the distance, you don't see anyone, probably there's someone hiding at the back with like a long range AR or a sniper and yelling that contact. You don't really want to take on fights with the sniper unless you know you can win that fight. That's the best way to counter it. As far as shotgun users, shotguns are just so strong, probably overpowered in this game as of right now. And all you can really do is to crouch and sort of listen for the enemy's footsteps. Shotgun players like to run in and they get all aggressive. So you can sort of bait them into just running at you constantly. And what you have to do is you have to be listening and pre-firing as they come around the corner because of if they hit you, you're basically dead. Another tip is to jump shot as well and just make it a little bit harder for them, you know, hope they miss their shot. Coming in at number five for the tip, I will say with the mini map in this game, now it is looking like because of leaks, we are going to begin a November sort of patch update that probably is going to have to do with changes to the mini map. But 
as of right now, uh, the minimap is basically mainly useful for your teammates' locations because enemies do not pop up on it when they are shooting. Uh, they will pop up on the compass, and the compass is, is useful, especially in ground war. You can look up there, see which flags the enemy team has, and see which direction those dots are to know which angles or which way you want to sort of sprint into or set up, you know, which way you want to be looking. But in terms of the minimap, the best way to use the map as of right now is because you can still see yourself and your teammates on it. Judging based off of where you and your teammates' positions are, you have to be able to learn and use that, especially work. this works great in like a uh, TDM because the spawns are constantly flipping or a kill confirmed. In Domination, you can kind of predict the spawns just based on where the Domination flags are, right? But this is definitely an important thing. Using that minimap and seeing, okay, you know, I have five teammates over on the right side and then you, you look at the kill feed, oh, there's no gunfights happening, so obviously the enemies are not on that right side or else my teammates would be in a firefight with them right now. They're probably over on this left, so I'm going to be careful and hope I don't run into ten enemies over on this left or whatever it may be. This takes a lot of practice, but using the mini a lot of people think the mini map's useless if you can't see people shooting. It's not as useful, but looking at your teammates' locations can help you determine where the enemies are or aren't if you uh, you know confer with that uh, kill feed as well as you know your audio and that mini map. It does take practice, all this stuff does, but I think applying these tips can really help you improve at this game. Once again, we got a lot more stuff to talk about. I'm sure I'll be doing way more tips and tricks videos. Let me know in the comment section down below what are you guys having trouble with in this game as of right now? What do you want to hear me talk about in my next tips and tricks episode? I want to, I'll, I'll be scrolling through some of the comments and uh, seeing if there's any good ideas of things that I should talk about. So I'd really appreciate that. Let me know what, what you're struggling with or what you want to hear me talk about in terms of getting better at the game. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. If you made it to the end, end of the video, hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.